Welcome to the Killing Podcast, Season 2, Episode 4. We are just moving right along. I want you to say it. Ogie June. Ogie June! I don't know if I'm butchering that. Oh, I'm sure we are. Okay. I'm sure we and are. And I don't know what it means. Wait well, for just, us to I think do our research. Name, I think it's the name of the character. The, I know, the but we could have at least looked into it a little. Arm. Feels like maybe we should have done a little work. Should we pause? Should we no. do the magic of podcasting? We absolutely and... should not, because some someone will... A, you know, let us know. Okay. Someone will write us and say, you're freaking more honest. Send us an again. email at Southgate Media Group at well, gmail.com. They could, tweet, they could tweet it. You can tweet it at or the Killing it on Pod Facebook or and publicly humiliate us. At our Southgate or SMG Pods. Or you can go on Facebook yeah. and do it. Look, we're not going to have to say all that at the end of the episode. Pretty yeah, sweet. You probably huh? are. So Sarah and Holder are in the car on a stakeout. Right. I'm glad to see them back together. Right, right. And Sarah's trying to process what this guy's motivation is. This manga guy. A manga. Gosh, I did it again. <laughs> you did? The All tattooed right. guy. Let's the, just say that. The tattooed guy. Well, and, and Sarah says that this tattoo guy was, was involved in the burning down of Beausoleil. Mm-hmm. And he said, if she said he knows something. And she also says that it's clear that Rosie knew him. It wasn't just that he was, you know, randomly in this film, but she's like, it's clear that she knew him, and it's clear that he's involved in this. So, once again, things are starting to tie together. Uh, we'll see where this goes. And Hell Holder says that... They're, he, they're doing that thing again, though, where they're really pointing you in a direction like, oh, Yeah, they're it's trying this to get us, guy. and it doesn't work on me anymore. Because right. they've pulled... They've dangled the carrot and pulled it away right. too we many times. We thought it times. was Bennett, no question. We thought it was Muhammad, Darren. no question. Well, I Darren. questioned Darren because by then they had done it too many times. Right, right. Um, so Holder says that he knows a legit lab guy that can test the bag. Right. And Sarah wants the guy's name. Right, she's questioning this because she's even though she's back with Holder... She's still Well, she's still unsure. saying, you screwed up. Right. Whether you did and, it on purpose and, or and, not is beside the point. But and you this guy that you up. know, how do I know that he's not going to be another, like, exactly. your guy? So she just wants to be able to, yeah. you know, check him out and make sure that that he's he is actually legit. Yeah. And, and um, Holder's trying to explain that he thought the photo was real. Well, yeah, he says real. That, that Gil saved his life. Right. So, of course, I mean, he, he put his trust fully in the guy. Yeah. And, you know, she's got to be able to see that, you know. Well, and actually he says, I guess I just trusted the wrong guy. And she says, I guess you did. Yeah. yeah. So she's not really cutting him a lot of slack. Well, she also says we're in a shitstorm because of you. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> it's it's not good. She's not she's not letting him off the hook. No. But, but he's, he's but trying to explain, time, like, hey. a mistake. Yeah, you can understand why I bought into what Gil was selling. Mm -hmm. And then Holder, you know, they see the guys, and Holder says, those aren't Stan's boys. They don't have the overalls. And so they're speculating, are they Yonix? I didn't didn't catch her say that. I I knew that they were talking about it, but the... I didn't catch him saying it. Okay, well, you said her. The, the, that I, would offend my sweet little holder. The fact that they said the holder. thing about the, the overalls, I didn't catch that that was said. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And so then. they're speculating Yannick's guys, and the, and they're moving boxes of cigarettes. Right. Um, but there's no tattooed guy. Right. And they, they follow them, uh, want to see where this is leading. Maybe it's going to lead him to the tattoo guy. Maybe it's not. And Sarah says, I wonder if Stan knows that his truck was used to cover up his daughter's murder. Oh, awful. Um, and you know what? Really, Once I'm again, thinking no. Let's go back to that last episode when we were talking about this. You know, I don't know if Stan knows that Yannick's guys are using his trucks this way. Right. Although, he's well, out of jail. how do they have them? You'd think he'd know by now. Well, now he knows that they're using the trucks, but when this all went down, I don't know if he knew they were using the trucks. I think that he has known, but I, I don't think he realized they were using it to for oh, his family. Oh, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Stan is in Rosie's room, and he gets a call from the morgue saying that they're going to cremate Belko. Well, so, uh, wait a minute. What? Do you have more to say? Day 17. Oh, okay. Okay. So he says he'll come and pick him up. Yes. Because he doesn't want him to just be cremated and dumped somewhere. Right. Right. He feels bad about what happened to Belko. He understands that Belko was unstable. And this whole situation caught, pushed him to this. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't want to just see him thrown out in the trash. That's understandable. I mean, this is a guy that he took into his house that was part of his business that he cared for. Mm-hmm. So, even though he was Belko. 
Can I go off topic for a moment? Sure, let's go off topic. Why is your shirt inside out? My shirt is inside out because I'm going to stand on my soapbox for a second because it's a Frosted Flakes t-shirt and I don't want to promote Frosted Flakes. To, well, you're home alone with your family. As a shut-in, I have to take my stance <laughs> in case the cats decide. That is quite a get stance GMO. you're taking. Okay. Well, I just was curious that's because why. there are big tags sticking off and they're distracting me. Yes. But that's that's why. I just don't want to promote things that I'm not. To, although I do love uh, advertising imagery like that. Like, I like the Tony the Tiger image, which is why I have the shirt. Why don't you just put another sign that says, I like the image, but don't eat it. Yeah, because I'm not some hippie college student. Oh, that... no, you're home alone wearing a freaking <laughs> shirt inside out. Okay. I don't Taking wanna... a stance for something that no one's going to see. You know what? And you're not a weird hippie something? Now that you mention it, it seems a little weird. It's a lot <laughs> weird. Okay. I am so sorry to bring the audience in on that one. Okay. okay. I, well, just, I, I just was curious. I can always pause and put it the right way if you need me to. I was just curious because she had the tags were a little distracting. Because okay. they're really big and flicking out there. You're talking skin tags or are you talking no, about the uh, tags, on my... tags on your shirt? Those are skin tags. So Terry's fighting with Tommy about going to school. Tommy is getting to be a real anger ball. Well, I wonder why. Yeah. Mom's gone. Well, no one will talk about anything. Dan is blowing smoke. Belko's dead. Or, yeah, Belko's dead. Yeah. Um, they find got... a backpack in the front of the house. There's just all they sorts of stuff. They got hitmen, you know, or mobsters. And he just wants to go out and have a little smoke, and they won't let him. So Stan intervenes and gets him moving. Yeah. Um. Well, he doesn't and intervene. Terry's... He just yells at him. He well, makes that's him. the same as intervening. He doesn't sit there and ignore it. It's not like a you know we're all going to sit around and talk and have an intervention. Did he? Did he ignore it? He intervened. Thank he you. did. Okay. So Terry was saying that if Tommy doesn't want to go to school, then something's up. Right. So th- something is up. Something is up. Yeah, it's a big something. So Danny wants to know where Belko is. Okay, so I take uh, back the and Belko's dead because they don't even freaking know. Yeah, they don't even know. I didn't. How yeah. do these kids? How do these people? Think? But they they know Belko's not around, so that would be causing stress. But they don't know that Belko's dead. Well, that Belko and then, shot okay, himself. This is a bizarre plot device because I question who would ever. Okay, he says Belko was going to take us. He said he was going to take us to the zoo yesterday. Right. Really, Belko. And yesterday wasn't... Was playing Big Brother wasn't, and taking him to the zoo? Terry I don't was going to take it. him to a pumpkin farm. Belka was going to take him to the zoo. I don't see it. Yeah, I don't know. So they tell him he's just been sick. I know, and I wrote on here, would you just tell him, tell them the well, truth? I don't understand why these people... Nobody can seem can, to tell the truth. I know. Nobody just, can be forthcoming about it. And guess what? Your lives would be a heck of a lot easier. Right. Right. And, and a lot less stressful if but everybody they, just they just can't seem to do it. it. They can't do it. So they see on the news about Beausoleil being burned down. Right. And then she sends, to- well, Tommy and Denny get sent down to the car. And Tommy proceeds to shut Denny in the trunk. <laughs> Tommy's got some issues he's trying to work through. Um, yeah. Yeah. So Terry responds in, the, in a logical manner by freaking out she shakes him and <laughs> right. yells at him so right. yes i understand oh my gosh there i understand that is a frightening thing you never do that to your brother right and i'm looking but, at myself because i probably would have oh, had, sure you- had a trunk um we had a we had a station wagon so there was nowhere to shove him. you would have found something i tried but but the fact that that she's they're not responding to any of the reasons why he's freaking out about right. they're just freaking out more on him instead right, right. of Trying well, to understand why he's a The mess. thing that really got me, when, when Tommy did that, it totally reminded me of Rosie being in the trunk. So that was yeah. making me kind of freak out. Yeah. I'm sure that's what Tommy was playing yes. out. Because they don't and, ever talk about and anything. And poor Denny is the one playing the dead sister yeah. by being locked in there. He oh. wouldn't have to act it out quite as much if they just ever freaking allowed him to, yeah. to you know, have a conversation. We did miss another moment um, when... When Stan was watching the news, the Beausoleil fire was on the news, and Stan mentions that the cops think that Rosie was involved there. And Terry, who we know was involved, is involved, says, but she wasn't, right? Okay. All signs are starting to point to Terry. Yeah. Because 
She knows. Mm-hmm. She knows. Now she may. She may not. She may be, you know, trying to get him off that path because she doesn't want her secret to be exposed, and she knows this really has nothing to do with Beausoleil. It just keeps coming back. But this is very fishy. Hmm. I have thought her to be fishy from day one, so mm. there won't be anything that surprises me. Maybe she hangs me. out down at at the uh, docks. Yeah, <laughs> she's very fishy. There you go. So he yells <laughs> at Terry after she shakes him. And and he says, you're not my mom. Why don't you go home? Yeah. And she's not. She's not. And she would love to go home. But her his freaking mother right. is off stooping some guy somewhere. We don't know if she stooped. She did kissy, dirty kissy. motel room. Actually, didn't didn't he leave before they did anything? I am. I'm not even addressing yeah, I, I I'm... In my head, I'm thinking that. I don't think, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, she doesn't want to play this role. Right. She's being forced into it, and, and, and it here sucks for everybody. Yeah, throw That's it all. If they would just be honest with each other, it might fix some of these things, but, you know what, we're going to be saying that till we're blue in the face. So they're in the FBI building, and Sarah knows a mob expert and oh, the, yeah, right. This guy, Corey. Oh, my gosh. This was funny. So he doesn't recognize the tattoo um, from anyone, any of the people that he's looking for. Right. Or, whatever, or has come across. Um, Holder puts on the guy's horn room glasses. <laughs> oh, my this gosh. Is the best. I love this there, like, scene. His ADD kicks in and he's playing with stuff. I love that he's back because... Yeah. That was really painful for me the last few episodes to have them be at odds and not right. Have him. But he's back. Oh, he's back. Um, Sarah not amused. by Oh, that. she is too. I know, She's but she gives him the front. mom look like just like seriously. Scully. You know, they have yeah. to front that they're not amused. But she's <laughs> but it totally was amused. pretty funny. And uh, the FBI guy shows them a photo of a mob guy who has a uh, trunk with his who's in a trunk with his hands bound. Right, just like Rosie, and they mm-hmm. and a says, gunshot gunshot wound to the head. He says that they think this is the last guy that Stan dealt with, that Stan killed this guy. And it was exactly... So now, it doesn't mean that Stan killed Rosie. No, but it, could, but what it, it, it leads to the idea of revenge. Might, well, yeah, it was somebody that knows Stan that was saying, oh, I'm going to do to her what you did to him. Right. Or, or another idea is that that's just how Yannick wants his guys to do it. Right. Which leads us back to Yannick. Exactly. So one way or another... Someone who was, who is... Someone involved with Yannick is involved in this. There. No question. That is what I was trying to get out of this mouth that wasn't working. Gotcha. So Darren's in the hospital, and an OT comes in with a wheelchair. And Darren kicks him out because he's, because the guy is cold and unsympathetic. Right, of course. Because that's what we've seen at this hospital. Right. This is the Feel Good Hospital. Yeah, it's not Dr. Feel Good. Not this Dr. Not feel. Dr. Feel. They have not, don't have good feels here. No. It's bad. These feels. are these are um This is a terrible hospital. Yes. And you would think with Especially his now power that he's been exonerated. And his, yeah, and, you would and think everything. they would at least move him to the better hospital no. or or that these people would This doesn't bode well for the medical community in Seattle. Because if this is the best that you can get, these are terrible jerky people. Yes. So that's... he's Except for Nurse Flirty. She was nice. She was nice. But she was a painful reminder for him of what will not not be. Yes. So Sarah and and Holder question Peter's girlfriend. Who? What? That guy. Peter... Who's Peter? It's supposed to be Peter, but it's the it's the Polish pronunciation. Oh, right, right. right. You mean the yeah. uh, okay? Peter. He's the Peter. guy that was killed. That Stan killed. Right. The it's the it's Peter. Right, Peter. <laughs> I'm so confused because I just wrote down P. I know who you mean. But the guy. I, the guy I that spelled was, it out phonetically so that I would be able to remember how to. The pronounce guy that it. was in the trunk that they say is the last guy Stan killed is this guy, Peter. Peter. And they go to talk to his widowed girlfriend. Oh, is she uh, an angry? She's very bitter. She likes her coffee and black. Very and bitter. Angry. She says they should have arrested Stan. Well, yeah. Uh, 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 if he killed somebody, yeah. We agree. Yes. And um, so she's not really wanting anything to do with Sarah and Holder because they've... They represent the they cops represent, that turn the yeah. other cheek or did nothing. Right. Um, okay. 
I loved this. When Holder is sitting there eating a bacon, egg, and sausage oh, right. sandwich. Right. And and the guy the other cop says, So much for being vegan. Right. Or something like that. You know, like they're teasing it. Because he always It's not just an egg sandwich. It's bacon, egg, and an, ham. Egg, bacon, egg, and sausage. Bacon, egg, and sausage. And you just go, Really, dude? Yeah. Um so it was just really <laughs> Ooh, that funny to me. Good. Mm. Of course, but but you can't then say you're vegan. I am not. <laughs> um, Sarah gets a call that her ex is suing for joint custody. Ugh. Right. And this is understandable, too, because of what we saw where... Now, I still don't know. She was very ticked off at him before. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he was such a great guy through all this. But now we're seeing his side of the story a little bit. And he's mad that she was going to take Jack. And he's mad that... She's kept Jack away from him, but you and know, that we, she's a neg- 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 negligent mother, right? I mean, she really is not parenting this no. child. But if we go back, I don't know if he was either. Right. I think he's he's doing it now. He's trying now, but I don't know if he was so good. He she may have been the lesser of two evils in the beginning, right? I don't know. And I don't. I get a weird vibe. Of off that storyline too, like I keep wondering if he's involved in something, something not Rosie's murder, but in but something, s- in some way. Yeah. There's something going There's on. There's something going on with this guy. Why did he surface when he did? Why is he trying to keep her there? I mean, but it could just be, it could be what we see at face value, which is he had problems with her. He's trying to make amends. He wants Jack in his life. Either and that or he's not trying to, to distract about. her. But I have a feeling she, from the case. I have a feeling that he doesn't have any rights, that she has a restraining order against him because she has made reference like you're not supposed to be here, you're not allowed to be here. Things like that. So I have a feeling it's not we're not getting the whole story. Right. So they question Rosie's friend again. I don't remember her friend's name. Yeah, I don't remember her name. Um the high school friend. She she recognizes the tattoo. Oh, guy. Sterling. Her name was Sterling. Sterling. That was it. She recognizes... Man, that was way back at the beginning of the first season. She recognizes the tattoo, and it's a guy around 18 who was staring at her. Yeah, she says that he creeped Rosie out. Rosie told him to get lost. He had been in prison. You know, this whole scene, she was acting really nervous, too. So I don't know if she was nervous... She's a high school girl. They were at the high school. She might be nervous about that. Maybe somebody there knows something that's watching her. I don't know why. I think she could possibly be nervous because every single person that she has, that they have gone near, has gotten beaten up or shot or yeah. whatever. And it's like, get away from me. I am not a part of this case. I don't want to be a part of this case. Yeah, I want I, nothing to do with this. I mean, if you think about it, that only, would be terrifying. This was only a couple of weeks ago that this happened. So she is going to be visited a few times right. here. But if you're saying, I don't know why she'd be nervous, look well, at what happened to her teacher. Look at what happened to Darren. Look at what happened to I, Belko. I get that. And, and I, I, I totally get, like, on the surface why she would. But I wonder if there is something specific that was happening there that was making her nervous mm-hmm. rather than just this whole culmination yeah, it could of be. So this, this was an interesting scene. Jamie calls Gwen. Oh, she asks about Mitch, by the way, too. Yeah. But, so she doesn't know about Mitch either because right. no one's communicating with anybody. Okay. So Jamie calls Gwen. He needs her help. And she's in D.C. at yes, this point. Yes. And he needs her to answer questions about Darren's routine because he's trying to, he thinks that maybe it would help if, if they could get some of the things right, if they could start getting him back right. into his routine. Might bring him back from the she edge here. She starts and crying, she's, well, as she remembers. She's upset with him, and she this whole thing is very upsetting her. Like, she's trying to just deny it all happening. She's more upset with Jamie, I think, than she is with Darren at this point. I think Probably. That, that she just is But she gets sad. really uncomfortable, yeah. and she's trying to hang up. She wants to get away from this. So she says he doesn't care about little things. That won't get him out of bed. He needs to be Darren Richmond again. Right. And, she and she's right. is dead on. She's right. His his deal, I mean, it's all wrapped up in this political ego. Whether it's as bad as Adam's or not, I don't believe it is. But he needs to get back to that world, to being that guy. Because otherwise he's going to fall into deeper and deeper depression and he's going to blame everything on what happened to him. Exactly. That's how it is. Exactly. Belko. He's blaming yeah. Belko. So they're at the... Pro- when, couldn't you really make a case that you could blame Belko's mom? Yes. Hmm. Well, you could probably blame a lot of things. It's a sticky wicket. 
So Sarah and Holder are at the prison waiting to talk to a tattoo artist. Right. And so the guy comes in and he's the one. He recognized it right away. And he's like, oh, it's Oki June. You know, he said that's, um, I did that on this guy Gifts, they called him. Right, right. He was a foster kid. And right. he had gone through the whole foster care system and then ended up in prison. And he did the the tattoo for him. Right, right. And he remembered exactly who it was and what the deal was. Uh, another thing that happened in this scene is Sarah gave Holder his badge back. Mm. So that's really important, too, Hugs. because remember in the other episode, he ditched it mm. because he didn't feel he earned it. And yeah. she's like, here you go. You, she did, He has earned it. Right. Darn, darn it. Uh-oh. Yeah. Does he need some Holder hugs? He does. Do you need a Holder Holder? Yes. Holder Holder. Um, so Jamie comes in with treats for Darren, as opposed to flowers. Treats. Uh, he insists Jamie puts him in the chair. And and his sister, he says that, you know, that his sister had sent the chair, the wheelchair, and he said Elise would send money before getting on a plane. Yeah. Well, and that's apparently so that's true. sad. Yeah. That is I, so sad. I do want to know what the story is with this Elise, but once again, this isn't a storyline that I'm super invested no. in. No. I don't I would, care that much. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, I want to know yeah. kind of the story, but if we get like four episodes of Elise comes into town and we oh, get no. all this drama, I'm not I'm out. into yeah. it. I really want to know about Rosie. I want to know about Holder and Lyndon. Yeah. I want to know about Stan and his dealings with Yannick. Yes. And that's what I want to know. Yeah. So, so there Jamie, you go. So in case anyone cares. I know that we don't have Belko anymore. Know. I liked the Belko storyline. I did story like the line. Belko storyline. It was um, weird. So Jamie picks him up. And then they fall to the ground. I mean, that was really... You know what really, I wrote? Jamie is a, like a twig. I mean, what was he thinking? <laughs> I didn't write that he fell to the ground. I just wrote squish. Because that's totally what happened. Darren landed on top of him and it was like... <laughs> and Jamie is like a little peanut. Yeah. And, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So why I don't... That would be like you picking me up. It would. <laughs> and dragging would. me around. And except I know better. And Jamie knew better, but he did it anyway. Because yeah. Darren is persuasive. <laughs> right. Uh, so we now know that the kid, the tattoo kid, is named Alexi Gifford. Right, Gif, but Alexi Gifford. Gifts. 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 Oh, okay. I put Gif. Um, but I left off the S for savings. But they don't call him that. They call him Alexi the right. whole time. The rest so of the time he's Alexi. You never have to know that. Okay. Um, so he, so he is. They, they, he lives three blocks away from the Larson's house. Right. Right, and if Rosie was getting creeped out by him, this guy's three blocks away. He's in the neighborhood. He's looking in windows. He's oh, there. Oh, who are the stalkers in your neighborhood? <laughs> oh, that was a good one. How, were you holding on to that? No, I just thought of it. That was really good. Yeah, you know, I have my moments. You know what? That was new, too. It wasn't one of your standby no, songs it wasn't. that you do. Stands at the morgue, and, the, and they said the funeral home already picked up Belko. Okay, this was the weirdest scene Ever. Stan goes to this church and he's Belko's in a casket right at the front of the church with only Yannick sitting there. Right. Well, who's going to show up other than Stan? But what? They didn't even tell Stan. Right. Right. It was just the weirdest it thing. Was he very went right bizarre. from a morgue over to a church? Well, that. Well, yeah, what are they going to do? Take him out for a perch dinner? That's, of course, what they do. Oh, well, no, but why was he. I, <laughs> what do you think? This what are doesn't they make do? any sense to me. But the fact that it's just Yannick sitting there and Stan's not aware, that's weird. It's weird. But but then again, maybe it isn't weird because he was saying, I'll pick him up, but they took him over anyway. The only ones that may have shown up anyway were Yannick and Stan. So the fact that Yannick is there and Stan's not there yet, it's just because he went did the diversion of going to the mor- morgue first. So it's, it's weird. It seems a little weird, but... It also seems convenient that it's just the two of them right. in that room. And, and they why the are they doing it if it's if it's uh, just the two of them? Well, what? You want to just throw him away? No, but they don't have to do it at the church. They, can't they have like a little memorial right by the grave? Well, maybe. I would have planned this event a little differently. Oh, I know you would have. But <laughs> I'm, I'm, what, I just like to plan events, what's and that's not what this that's is. That's not what's this happening is just here. Weird. So there's a portrait of Belko. <laughs> this conversation's weirder than this scene. Yeah. There's a portrait of Belko and sitting there by the right. by the casket. And but Yannick says at least Belko went out like a man. Ooh. 
Was it like an awkward family that photo is portrait quite of Belko? A... With his mom giving him a back rub or something? <laughs> yeah. And um <laughs> You're just ignoring me. <laughs> I am. So he tells he tells Stan that the kids are beating up Tommy at school and teasing him about his sister. Yeah. So now Tommy, of course, can't tell anyone because no one in his family no will have a freaking conversation. Right. So he's he's been holding it in so that so Yannick's I people know. Would go nuclear. Well, you would have already known. Yes, I would have already known, but I would go nuclear if I knew those kids were teasing my kid about his sister dying. Dead sister, yeah. That is so outrageous. And you know it's true. You know that's the kind of stuff that happens. It's so outrageous. Those rotten kids. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and what's more upsetting is that Yannick knew before Stan. So it's showing Stan once again, not, you're failing. Yeah, you're, you're failing as a dad. Failing. You're not involved the way you should be. You know, what they really need is, because they know Sarah, she could teach them how to shoot paintball like she did Jack, and he can go and Work shoot those bullies. Mm-hmm. No, shoot the bullies with the paintball. Yeah, I know. Work it out. Yeah. Work out them feelings. All right, Work so out them feelings. I said the, but it came out like them. I realized that. <laughs> totally did. I was like that kind of. Work out like... them feelings. I didn't say that, though. but yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, so Holder and Sarah are trying to. They're at Alexi's, and um, nobody's home, and she wants to go in the foster records, and but of course they're sealed. They can't see them unless Alexi lets them. Right. And he said, uh, Holder said, Rosie's like. Rosie likes bad boys like her dad. <laughs> Alexi's. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Which Holder had a very funny comment there. Or no, wait, Holder said that, right? Yeah, he said. Sarah had Rosie. the funny comment. She said, Did you read that in O Magazine? <laughs> See? That was I a good them. one. I love them so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I thought that was a great one. And then uh, he said, Alexi's a planner. Right. So, Which, yikes. Yeah. Yeah, this was planned out, Alexi. Not looking good for you, my friend. So Jamie wakes up to see the mayor's advisor sitting in the waiting room, because Jamie's at the hospital. Right. And the mayor's advisor sitting there, the guy that he beat up in the gym. Right, right. They had fisticuffs. Fisticuffs. Uh, the mayor is talking I to love Darren. That. And Darren calls the mayor out as the one who tipped off the police. Right. Um. So Jamie comes in and confronts him for showing up at the hospital, and the mayor says, you ran a solid campaign and you'll end up on your feet like Gwen. Uh-huh. Um, um, on your feet, Darren's paralyzed. Right. And he's Cruel. laying there. Cruel. Yeah. Really freaking nasty, this guy. Yeah. Oh, Adams oh, he's is, just such a scumbag. I believe the, the term for him is piece of work. Yeah. Piece <laughs> of something. Piece of something. He asks if Sarah did anything with this FBI guy, and Sarah just makes a face. So what? So Holder, I love this part. Holder says, "So what's up with you and the Fed? The Tom Waits wannabe." <laughs> so funny. Uh, and then I get to you didn't even say the best line. I get but to I, the, I love Tom Waits, and that's just hysterical. I, but the okay. best line is go ahead. So he's basically asking, "Did you hook up with this guy?" And and she. She uh, makes a face at him, which is obvious she did. Yeah, she's and, so guilty. And he goes, oh, snap, Lyndon rocked the booty call. Oh! And then he goes, 1-900-Lyndon. Yes. And she goes, that's not even enough numbers. Yeah, that cra- I did write that down. That was that so great. That cracked me up. And then Holder reminds her. <laughs> oh, Lyndon rocked the booty call. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> it's not even enough numbers. <laughs> So um, funny. Holder reminds her that she ran away every six months. Ugh. And Yeah, okay. Didn't he just get back in the good graces with her? But wait, He's not he, even fully back in, and what's he doing? He says, that's why the whole Sonoma thing. And she pauses a moment and then kicks him out of the car. <laughs> kicks him out? What an idiot. He's kicking the she hornet's totally, nest for no she reason. She totally ditches him. And he said... Uh, he, he was he, fine with the rock and the booty call. He even got away with 1-900-Linden, yeah. but, but now... But you're not getting away with that's why the no. whole Sonoma thing, because you can't do anything for more than six months. Right. So, so she says, get a car Dumb sent holder. out. Dumb and, and, uh and keep your eye, eye your eyes open for Alexi. So she just pushes him right out of the car and says, "You can get your own car sent, and you keep. Oh, I'm out. I'm done. Right. I'm out of here. Right. 
So, yeah, very, but I just loved that oh, scene. Oh, the whole Holder scene was fantastic. cracks me up. Fantastic scene. Okay, so Stan is at the school. And he sees, uh, Tommy in the, in the, play, on the playground, and there's some bigger kids, and they're picking on him. Yeah, he's I, getting roughed up. I don't know how Stan didn't go in there and start. I would have torn the fence down. Oh, yeah. I would have, I would have at least yelled at him or yelled at the teacher that's standing there like, hey, do you see what's going on here? I, I'm watching you kids. But he doesn't do that. No. But he's mad. Yeah. He handles it differently than I would have. So he gets him to come over. Yeah, and he teaches him prison rules is what yeah, he teaches Yeah, he says him. pick the biggest guy and hit him hard on the bridge of the nose. Right. Lovely. Yeah, that's his advice. It's prison that's advice. That's fantastic. You, you go into a prison, the first thing you do, you pick the biggest guy and you break his nose, and that way everyone leaves you alone. You know that how? Because you go Be- to prison? <laughs> because yeah. I've watched Scared Straight. Because <laughs> I saw Stir Crazy. <laughs> I love Stir Crazy. Oh. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Oh, I love that movie. That was a great one. That's right. We's bad. <laughs> no, that's not that movie. The one with uh, we's, Gene Wilder and... Uh, we's bad? It, but, no, that's and, right. Uh, We're bad. But, Richard Pryor. But that was in Stir Crazy. And they walk like that. Yeah. That was in <laughs> Silver Streak. Oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah, you did. That's right. <laughs> Where they're in the bathroom and he's trying to teach him how to be black. He's teaching Gene Wilder how to be black. And he's like, you know, show it off, show it off. And he goes, that's right. We bad. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he's like, yeah, no, you... No, he just, did as well as I did. Yeah, right? about as well as you did. Mm-hmm. In Stir Crazy, they do the thing where they're dressed like the birds, which is very funny. Uh, and they do the thing when uh, that's when we're asked to ride what the kind bull. Of birds? They're they're in like bird costumes when they're trying to escape. Or no, not it's, it's, the band, the birds. Oh no, I love the birds. You know how to distract me so easily. So all right, get get back on track. So, okay. So one night under Linden. He told him to no. He told him to punch the biggest kid in the face. Yes. Okay. Can we so, watch Stir Crazy later, maybe. No. Okay. Terry's in her car smoking, and she calls a house, and a woman answers, and she hangs up. Totally, it's the guy from the funeral right parlor. Right. So. Do you, no, you need you to keep going. No, I got okay. lost there. So Jamie comes in with a get well card from their from the elementary school. Right. And Darren wants him to tell the people that he dropped out of the race. Right. Well, because he's he's depressed, and, and he, now he's like, "I'm I'm done. Just tell him." And I'm he done. he tries to fire Jamie. He says, "You're fired." And Jamie says, "You can't fire me if you're not running." Right. <laughs> In your face, Darren. Right. Well, so. and he calls Jamie a coward. It's like, really, dude. Yeah. Jamie went into Adam's camp for you. Right. He's here when no one else is. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. You're upset and everything. Well, but he's the coward for hiding in things. his bed and saying, oh, I'm not going to run anymore because, right. well, okay, not run in that sense. Ouch! No, but I mean, he's, I don't, I mean, run. You're just as mean No, I'm as... not. That wasn't mean. Intentionally. I'm saying not run anymore in the in race. In the race. In the, the campaign. <laughs> in the campaign. Boy. Boy, digging your way out I of that one. I did not mean the other way. Um. So Sarah shows up at Reggie's, and we have not seen Reggie no. in a very, very no, long not since, time. No, not since, he, since uh, Jack called her a lesbian and they left. So it's been a and while. And she's being a big jerk to Reggie when it's like, really, honey, you're the one who yeah. needs a, to really give her a big apology because right. she has... That's not yeah. Sarah's M.O., though. No, it's not. So, so she wants... Uh, um, she wants records on the foster kid. Now, she Reggie's, wants Reggie to... to to go behind Reggie's a foster parent, or, or is no, involved she, in it. she's like somewhere in the in the system, in the right? System. Right, because she has helped. She was she a was social the case worker, worker or social yeah. worker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she that's why she asked her. And Reggie's like, look, I can't do that. I, I legally cannot do that. And uh, but she knows that Reggie's her best shot. Yeah. at getting this information. So unless she wants something, she's not going to talk to Reggie. Well, you know what. You know what? In in real time frame, that was like four days ago, five days ago, that that all went down. So mm-hmm. it was more than that. We we don't know if she's had some kind of it contact might have with been Reggie, a week and a half. or it might. You know, I don't think it was that long. But if she had, because it's only been a little over two weeks that this has been going on, mm-hmm. so it might have been a week ago. But you know, they they had their tiff. Sarah was embarrassed. She probably knows this is how Sarah operates. So I, I, I cut Sarah a little break there. Uh, I mean, I think that she could really work on her communication skills. Yes. Uh, but I think Reggie certainly uh, can deal with it. Absolutely. But Reggie can't deal with this. It's going to get her in trouble. 
Oh, yeah, it's good. This is going to, and you, she knows Sarah's not going to stop until right. she gets him. So one way or another, it's going to happen. Right. So Stan's washing one of his trucks out and he right. slipped inside the, he's inside the truck and he slipped. Yeah, he's cleaning out the back end he and he found something, something slippery and then he found the electrical wire bit. Yes. So he. And some kind of goo. Knows that his truck was used for some. No, he knows that exactly what it was used for. Bomb. Yes. It's the wire, and it's this goo, and he knows that's what this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Stan immediately hightails it over to Yonix. Yeah. And he's at that restaurant, and he tells him, or he shows him, this is the stuff. And he said, you said it was a dead end, that it had nothing to do with Rosie. And then the guy says... Then why are says, you torching Beausoleil? Well, no, the guy says, I cleaned up Beausoleil, so what? And he says, what did you do to Rosie? And then Yonix threatens his boys. Right. What? Frightening. This is... Yeah. Like, this is you know what, so Stan? big. This is why you should never have gotten involved with him. This is it right yeah. here. So Holder spots Alexi. He wasn't finished peeing, but he chases him anyway. Right, right. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he he walks up and, and the tattoo, what's his name again? Yeah, uh, Alexi. A- Alexi. He just runs. He tears mm-hmm. off and, and Holder's running after him. So he's got to close up. He's got to close gotta shop. Really close, right. Because he's, he's running, whether it's out or not. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he loses Holder at this high fence. Mm-hmm. And Holder has to call for backup. Yes. Uh, and Sarah meets a woman who Reggie connected her with, of course, because we knew Reggie was going to Of have course. To do it. She shouldn't do this. I hope this doesn't hurt Reggie. But she did it. She got her a connection at the foster building. And so Alexi was abandoned at four years old by that woman, by the widow, or this girlfriend, right. Peter's girlfriend. Right. Uh, he was adopted at 13. And he, so we find out here he's Peter's son. His mom was forced to give him up when Peter was killed. And so now they know Stan killed his father. Right. So now they're seeing, ooh, there's some motive there. Right. Although there's motive everywhere you look. Right, right. It, it's almost like this was... Something it's like, bad was going to happen. Who didn't have a hand in killing Rosie in this town? <laughs> right. I mean, really. It's murder on the Orient Express. It's everybody Yes. Did it. So Holder sees a picture of Alexi and his dad, and he sees that it's Peter. So now, in two different areas, they've both connected. Sarah is not with him, so right. she has connected it on her own, and now Holder's connected it. Right, 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 and, right. Um, but they haven't told each other yet that they both know. And then Darren sees himself in a mirror. Yeah, we're getting to that end of the episode. Things are happening really fast now. And then Stan is in his office, and Alexi's mother is watching him and, yes. and says, you know who I am? And... And then says, you, you got what you deserve oh. about Rosie. Well, we don't know if it's about Rosie. It's about all sorts of things. But it's awful I, I think it's about what Rosie. she says. It probably yeah. is. But it's it's terrible. And once again, that that's implying, since we've seen that Yannick, you know, knows about how how she was in the trunk and everything, mm-hmm. that that's his, how he does things. It's once again indicating that, like, yeah, maybe Alexi did this. I'm aware of it. You deserve it. Mm-hmm. It would, it happened the way that Yannick would want it. You know, it's like a lot is getting tied up yeah. in there. And That's even terrible. If, and even if Alexi didn't do it, even if she doesn't think Alexi did it, she's saying you deserve to watch someone you love die. Right. In this because, horrible way. Because you did the, you same, did thing. the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, and so very, very difficult scene. We see, we see Sarah and she's at Alexi's. And she finds the Ogijun manga there. Yeah, she was looking at his books. Right. And, and she then, finds that yeah, there. She f- which wasn't a big reveal because we knew that he had the tattoo. We knew that he had the book, I'm sure. But more disturbing, he has a picture of Rosie all scratched out. And it's all scratched out. What is up with that? Uh-huh. A lot of anger there. That is really bizarre. Yeah. So, so, my gosh, I can't wait to get to the next episode. All signs point to Alexi at this point, but I but, don't know. But, no, I still don't. I still, Yannick, all signs point to oh, Yannick. Oh, yeah, Yannick is involved. No There's question. There's no question But there. I'm not convinced yet on who actually no. chased her and did all that. Why, and where did he get a, the car? Right, right. Why was he Why involved was with he that? Why was he in a car, in that, in a campaign car? So, I, yeah, no, it doesn't there's make more sense, to but, this story than is meeting the eye. But we're definitely, like the Transformers, but we're definitely getting... Robots in disguise. 
Nice. We're definitely getting uh, um, a lot of clues here about Alexi, and no matter what, he's going to be important in this in this situation. Yes. Well, that's it. All right. Let's end Excellent. this episode. I can't wait for the next one. Yes. And I'm also getting stressed because I'm seeing the end of this season in sight, even though this is only episode, what, four of the season? I don't know. It feels like it's going very quickly. Four. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Feels very quick. All right. So that's it. Uh, Please go to our website. You can listen to other episodes and hear all of our other shows there at www.southgatemediagroup.com. We talked about our Twitter stuff at the beginning of the episode, so I'll, I'll ditch that here. Uh, but do follow us on iTunes and on Stitcher. Subscribe on those platforms. Give us reviews. Give us thumbs up on Stitcher. Give us uh, five-star reviews if, if you feel so inclined on iTunes. And write reviews. It helps other people find this show. And if you're a fan of The Killing, you know that there are other Killing fans out there that would love this. So I hope. I think so. I I, yeah, you're feeling I enjoy quite it. cocky about that. Well, I, I'm enjoying the yeah. show quite a bit. So I, I hope that the, that other people are enjoying what we're doing with it, because I think it's a good time. And the feedback's been good, too. So that's it. Let's wrap this up. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Rob Southgate. I'm Martha Southgate. Maybe next time we'll find out. I, I don't know, but no, who killed not. Rosie Larson? How many? How many of them? Murder on the Orient Express, yes. I'm telling you. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the Donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.